In this video, we're going to continue where we left off previously by turning our attention to the gun barrel, where we're going to sample some of the worn metals that we have in the metals folder. We're also going to look at attachments of smart materials to a layer, and we'll also touch on smart material history. But before I go any further, I should mention two very important maps that are necessary whenever you're using smart materials, and that is ambient occlusion and the curvature map. When you import a model into 3D Coat, you will click on a smart material and find that it will begin generating a curvature map, which is necessary when you are using conditions as we looked at previously. Conditions such as more on concave, convex, and so on. Ambient occlusion is also necessary with many of the smart materials because there are conditions that need it, such as more in shadow, more in lit. If you need to create either of these manually, you can access them through the textures menu right here. Calculate occlusion or calculate curvature. The curvature map will by default be non-visible. As you'll see, the visibility icon is turned off, and that's because the viewer doesn't necessarily need to see it. It's just there for 3D Coat to read it internally. Let me hide the ambient occlusion layer and I will unhide the curvature map. With that visible, you'll notice that in the baking process, it creates lighter grayscale values in the convex areas of the surface, darker values in the convex areas, and medium values in the flat or low curvature areas. So again, this is just something for a 3D coat to read internally. You can also export it for your game engine if needed. I'll unhide our ambient occlusion map. And one thing I like to do if I have a scene with a lot of different parts and a lot of different layers, I will go to the Paint Objects panel and I'll click the object I want to isolate. We could also do that with our paint layers as well. I'm going to isolate it to a few different layers here by holding down the Alt key. This is one that I've created previously and I attached a smart material to it. So I can turn the normal map back on. Now the barrel layer, this is one that was baked from a PBR shader. You can apply a regular layer as a mask to another layer. And that's what I have here. I'm actually going to hide this for the moment. And we'll just create a new one, clicking the new layer icon. Let's name it gun metal finish and click on the smart material we'll sample each one I'm going to zoom in that one looks pretty good so again we can paint a mask for certain areas to let less of this exposed metal show through or what I can do is use my brush to paint where I need it rather than just filling the entire barrel. So let's go ahead and do that. To make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to switch to the background, a vertical gradient. So I'm just lightly brushing in some areas. The barrel brushes used to clean these are metal wire brushes, so these will typically be fairly worn because the metal will scrape these quite a bit. going to undo that and let's adjust our opacity there we go
right, so I'm going to hide this preview window. And I'm going to hit the 5 key on my number pad to go into orthographic view, to a side view. And I'll use a rectangular marquee with ignore back faces unchecked. All right. So for demonstration purposes, I think that's sufficient for our needs. I'll go back to a standard brush draw mode and I'll hit the five key on the number pad to go back to a perspective view. All right, now let's say I want to save this particular material to this layer so that I can make adjustments later on or have the option to quickly sample each one of these without having to use the fill brush or the paint brush each time. I'm going to right click and choose attach to the current layer. 3D Code is telling me that if I need to make adjustments to the overall mapping or the map scale or move the image map that's driving a lot of the textures, then I need to first detach this material, make the adjustment, and then attach it again. So I hit OK. We can now see a thumbnail of the attached material, which will change with each successive material chosen or when modifications are made to the currently assigned material. Let's look at a few others. You'll notice it changes because the material has already been applied. Okay, so let's leave this one as it is, and what we'll do is we'll come to the layer that has the attached material, and we will choose to detach it. Now we are able to make our adjustments. I'll close that, and if I want, I can attach that again. So you might ask at this point, well, wait a minute. What if I want to go back to one of the other materials, but... I don't have to do all that work that I just did all over again. Well, that's fine. We actually have a means to do that. There is a panel that's not necessarily docked by default, at least not as of this recording, but it's available and it's called the Materials History panel. So to access it, we want to go to the Windows menu under Pop-ups. At the very top, you'll see it, Materials History. You might want to assign a hotkey to it so that it's easily available if you want to leave it floating in the viewport. Or if you click on it, you can just dock it wherever you like. You might prefer to have it floating. And if you click right here on the tab, it will leave it stationary inside the viewport. I'm going to hit the hotkey that I assigned to it. But you'll notice when I move it away, it moves that material history. I can see my smart materials palette here and I can also see the material history. So let's go back to the original one that we worked on. And you can see it puts us right back where we were. So we have a history that we can go back to and retrieve the work that we've done. I can still sample some of the others. But each time I click on another material, you'll notice how it is added to the material history. So let's click on this copper material. And that's added, and it's moved to the front of the line. It's the currently assigned material. But once we click on another one in this material history stack, we can see that it gets moved to the forefront. Let's stop right here, and we will pick up in the next video. So stay tuned, and thank you for watching.